Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you all for coming on on tonight. Blessings and favor. Apologize for the lateness. Trying to do it a different way tonight, but I'll try that a different time. But blessings and favor to all of you that are coming on and going to chime in after the re um, during the replay. Excuse me. I appreciate you on tonight. I thank you all for coming on for chiming in. I'm going to going to continue to talk about um, this area. Blessings and favor. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for coming on. Uh, this is a, a topic, well, actually not a topic, but just an area that the Lord has really been giving me over the years. For some of you don't that that don't know, I'm just going to give you a little bit of background, a little bit of, of what God has given me to do, uh, what my uh, the ministry that God has given me, and what it consists of, so you get a little bit of idea of why I'm, I'm consistent. I'm, I'm always talking about this particular area. Uh, especially if you're uh, watching uh, my posts and everything. Blessings, thank you for coming on. Uh, especially if you've been watching my posts for a while. You've been noticing that I've been posting a lot of things about um, abuse. Been talking about narcissistic abuse. Actually, this is the area that the Lord has really been giving me over over a long period of time. Um, I've been in the ministry now for over 20 years. And so this is an area that God has really... Has really um, I would say, um, enlarge my borders in. God really have given me a lot of insight in this particular area and not just only in, uh, ministering in this capacity, but also the Lord revealing a lot, even in my own personal life, the people that I've come in contact with. And so I'll be sharing more in that particular, um, area on many of my lives and, as time goes on, I will continue to share in this particular area because I do understand that that the hour that we're in and what God is really speaking about as far as the church is really coming to the place of really being restored. And God really wants his people to be restored. And so this, of course, is an area that many don't want to um, really don't want to target and, and hit and, and speak upon because there are so many areas that we, our own selves and our own lives where we can really say, okay, especially when God is shining a light in this particular area, we want to ask ourselves that, you know, am, am I, am I the abuser? Um, have I been one that, that have abused, um, someone, um, or am I the victim? And so, I'm just I'm sharing on tonight, and again, this air, this particular area is the power to forgive, and this is a this is a, um a, a area that many again we don't want to really push in on this area because a lot of times we say, well, you know, God, I've been abused, and um, how do I um overcome this area? How do I um how, after I've been abused? How do I uh, progress? How do I move on? Um, how do I um, how do I gain momentum again after I have suffered a level of abuse? And this is the area that I really want to help us really um, really come in on. Thank you for coming on on tonight. This is the area that I really want to hit in really hard in because a lot of times what we do we talk about abuse, we talk about um, even having being the victim of abuse, but we never go we never go beyond that. We never go into the healing stage. Age. We never go into how do I overcome after I have been abused because there's many that are stuck in the area of, of abuse, whether they are still in abuse, in an abusive relationship, abusive marriage, abusive situation, um, abusive leadership. Um, they can be under um, in an abusive in, um, workforce environment. And so there's so many different areas of abuse that a person can truly be under. However, we always target on that particular area of the abuse, but we never move on past that of how after I have been abused and I have came out of the situation, how do I progress after that? Because even though, and I say this a lot of times, and this can be in any area, but even though you have been moved out of the situation, that does not mean that the residue is not still there. And so God really wants to remove the residue. And I have to begin to even say that because I have experienced a level of abuse, I understand. So I'm not talking out of an area of of um of 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 um information, so to speak. I'm not coming out of the area of 
um, of what somebody else have gone through. I'm not even coming out the area of educational, you know, out of out of um, um, going through school and being educated in this particular area. No, I am talking out of experience as well as in revelation of what the Holy Spirit has always has already revealed to me and just really expounding in on those particular areas so you too can be healed that you too can move into the grace that God has called you into because one thing about abuse is this is something that um that we don't really look at but one thing about abuse is this abuse um uh, really began to target and come against the areas of your um of your assignment of your purpose that God what God has called you into um and so it hinders or it stops the target of the enemy is to stop you from walking in the totality of what God has called you to walk in and, and to keep you from walking in your purpose and in the grace that God has called you to walk in so really the truth of the matter is in this whole in this whole thing is this is that the enemy comes to steal to rob you of your purpose and your destiny that's the whole purpose why the enemy wants you to stay in a place of abuse and why he wants you to stay stuck in the place of oh my god i've been abused how do i how do i overcome how do i move on past the abuse but again on tonight we're going to talk about how to forgive your abuser how to forgive your abuser. Thank you for coming on on tonight. How do I forgive my abuser? The first thing I want to say is this. You cannot forgive on your own. You cannot forgive on your own. It takes the power of the Holy Spirit to help you to forgive. We cannot do it in our own ability. We cannot do it in our own um, in our own human um, mindset. We have to do it by way of the Holy Spirit. So it takes God. It takes us humbling ourselves to to in, in prayer and humbling ourselves before the Father and allowing Him to be able to um and allowing Him. To, 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 to bring us in a place of how can we um, how can we forgive? How can we forgive those that have hurt us? How can we forgive um, our abusers? How, how, how can we forgive? And so, um, so of course, again, it takes the first step into the healing process is the power and the ability to forgive. So I'm going to read a little bit of my notes. See, I'm not going to read it all because I'm going to end up... Um, eventually end up doing some things with this but um just a few areas of of the power to forgive um the first step in the healing process is the power to forgive again uh forgiveness is releasing the person being able to release the person or the people of the wrong that they have committed towards you and freeing yourself from the abuse which is the wrongs and the mistreatments that you have endured they had um, and they have caused you also forgiveness is releasing unto God what have been done to you by allowing God to handle it by allowing God to handle it so what when we when we release the person when we release um the people that have hurt us, that have abused us, then we're, and we release them into the hands of God. Then we're, we're taking our hands off. We're removing ourselves out of this, out of the situation, out of the equation. And we're saying, God, I can't do it, but I need for you to do it. And this is how we allow God to be able to vindicate us. This is how we allow God, um, to show forth his justice. Because one thing about God, God is a just God. God will avenge. Amen. God would avenge. God would begin to avenge us in these situations that we have found ourselves in as in being abused. But how do we find ourselves in these areas of being abused? This is a, this is another area. And I want to talk about as well is knowing how do we get into these particular areas as well. And again, this is not an area to condemn anyone. Um, of, of some of us say, well, God, I didn't see the red flag. So being that we did not see the red flag of the situation, we have a tendency to condemn ourselves. And therefore, that's where we, uh, we have to also forgive ourselves, not just only condemn ourselves, but we also have to forgive ourselves ourselves as well as to say, God, you know, show me, show me the areas in where I missed it. 
And so again, this is not to condemn anyone because we all have been in situations where we did not see the red flags, that we did not see the warning signs, that we did not take heed even when people have come and they have, have, have told us, you know, I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think that person is right. There's something that's not right about that person. And sometimes what we have done, we have, we have um, dismissed the warnings and we have went on into the relationship, not really, um, not really taking heed. So again, this is not to condemn any of us, but this is the moment where we can say, God, um, to evaluate ourselves and that the Holy Spirit begin to shine light in this particular areas so we can be able to see where we missed, where we messed up at. And that's one thing about the grace of God, about the goodness of God. God will begin to reveal to you where I missed it. How, how did I miss it? And, 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 and a lot of times, um, because of how fast or how advanced, how fast the um the abuser came in, we a lot of times miss it because of how the abuser came in. And a lot of times the abuser is not, I'm not gonna say a lot of times, but the abuser never come in as an abuser. Again, the abuser never come in as an abuser. They they never come in as um, I'm showing myself as uh, I'm going to abuse you. No, they never come in as abuser. They come in as this kind person, this sweet individual that that um that's going to give you the I will say would give you the world. They will pretend to be um everything that you are looking for in a in a in a spouse. And a um and someone to be in a relationship with, they are everything that you that you look for, they're everything that you hope for, and this is why it's important. This is why it's very important, and I tell and I tell people a lot of times this about not putting everything on social media. It's extreme not to put everything on social media because what usually happens. And this is how the enemy have really used social media um, to target many that that they put out too much information. And being that we put out too much information, we literally give people too much, um, too much of what of who we are. And, and what we like and what we don't like, we give them too much. We allow people to see into too much. And so when, especially when an abuser and, and again, talking about a narcissist, also, um, one thing about an abuser and one thing about a narcissist is that they sit back for a period of time. They sit back for a period of time and they watch the individual that they are targeting, the individual or the individuals that they are targeting. They watch that person for a period of time. Listen, they watch the individual so that they can know their likes, their dislikes, how they can come in, their areas of vulnerability. So when they get ready to, when, when the abuser, when, the, or when the narcissist, I'm just going to use both words, the narcissist and, or the abuser begin to approach their victim, they, they begin to, um, they have already, um, I would say that they, they've already um, have have um, modeled themselves, so to speak, or packaged themselves into the person that you're looking for. So when they come, you automatically assume, oh, my God, this is this is God sent. God sent him. God sent her, you know, and it's not even, you know, the person is not even from God, but because they come as an angel of light, they come just like the word tells us that Satan comes. He comes masquerading himself as an angel of light. And that's what abuser come to do. The abuser come to, they masquerade themselves and then they show themselves to look as if they are the person that you have been praying for, that you have just been crying out to Jesus about. And sometimes the abuser don't sit, they don't sit back for, for a month. Sometimes they sit back for a whole year and watch you for a certain amount of time before they make their approach. So again, this is how the abuser begin to come in. So, so, so that's when we have to ask the Holy Spirit to really begin to shine light in particular areas. And again, not saying that every person that come into your life that you, you just, um, 
assume that they are abuser or every person that come into your life you assume that they are a narcissist no but there are certain there are certain red flags that we are to pay attention to and there are certain things that we have to ourselves make sure that we have um, those areas in our life that that, that is um, that could be possible areas of vulnerability that we have not given over to the Lord that they have allowed the the, um, the abuser to come in and especially if you again if you have been abused before this is something that the enemy this is something that that the enemy do not want us to know if you have been abused before it is important that you take the time out and get healed it is important that you take the time out to get delivered and and, and deal with those traumatic areas because what what's going to happen is that another person that's going that's that is an abuser they're going to come in but they're going to come in in a total different way because now you have been abused especially if you have shared that you have been abused if you you have shared you know publicly this is this is why we have to be careful and this is why I'm very careful when it comes to the area of making sure before I even release something in the public I first have to make sure that those areas in my own life is already closed so when someone tried to come in in a different type of way then I'll be able to discern it before they can even think that they can come in but one thing about again when you have been abused you have to make sure that those areas of vulnerabilities are closed and that God has healed and delivered you from these particular areas because if not again the abuser is going to come in in a way that is not that that's going to look as if they're not an abuser they're not abusing. I know I kind of like repeating myself in, in some of these areas, but it needs to be repeated because we need to hear it over and over and over again. An abuser is not going to come in like an abuser. They're going to come in. Actually, if you tell them I've been abused I've and, and this is what I suffered, especially if you was abused at the end of the relationship or you was abused at the end of the marriage, then the person is going to um, have a false sense of sympathy. A false sense of sympathy towards you. And so, of course, they're going to be like, oh, oh, my God, you know, I can't believe he or she did this to you. And, and you know, I will never do this to you. I'm here for you. Uh, whenever you need me, what, whenever, you know, whatever you need, let me know. And so you begin to your, your guard begin to come down. Your guard begin to come down. When your guard begin to come down, then now you're giving them a little bit more room or a little bit more um. You're giving them more uh, space to be able to come in and to to um to um to 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 more so come into your life, so to speak, and those areas in your life, in those areas of vulnerability, you and you begin to tell those areas or expose those areas to that person, and they and now they have something to latch on to because they like now I have certain areas. Of of their vulnerability that um that now I have now I can use it against them and this goes into the area of um of territorial control of territorial control if you begin to share certain areas of your life um that is not meant to be shared especially not just with abusers but especially with people in general when people don't have your best interest at heart and you begin to share areas of vulnerability with people, then they will begin to use it against you. This is how people end up having territory control. And this is an area that I always teach people in. There are certain areas in your life is not to be um, allowed for people. It's not to be allowed for people to, um, to have certain areas in your life. There are certain areas in your life that only belong to God only only belong to God because again those areas if those areas are given to the wrong people then they can begin to use it against you they can use it against you even um to the point of blackmail a blackmail of oh I'm not gonna let you go and you know because now I have something I have something I'm holding over your head so they will not let you go. So again, you know, you have to be careful with those areas of vulnerability, and especially when it comes to a, um, a person that is coming in to abuse. Amen. Amen. So again, forgiveness is a choice. We have to understand this. We have to understand that forgiveness is a choice. You have to make the decision to forgive. If you're going to move on, if you're going to um, come into the place of healing, if you're going to, if you're going to come into the place of deliverance, then you have to decide to 
um, to, to forgive. You have to make a decision to forgive. And if we don't forgive, there is consequences that come, that come along with, with unforgiveness. It's a lot that comes, that comes in to unforgiveness. I remember some years ago when I did a teaching, it was my first, actually it was my first Bible study teacher. And my mentor, he asked me, he said, Hey, you know, can you mind um, teaching Bible study for a while? Because he had to, he had to um, take some time away. And so I was like, sure. So the Lord, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, I want you to do a teaching on unforgiveness. So I'm just teaching on unforgiveness. And I have this whole big setup and everything. I mean, I had the whole diaphragm. I mean, everything, this nice picture you all that stuff with, with unforgiveness and the roots of unforgiveness and what kind of sicknesses come in you know when you harbor unforgiveness in your heart and all that stuff and I mean I was teaching on the topic and I was teaching well until after the Bible study lesson and I was on my way home and the Holy Spirit spoke to me he said that lesson was for you that lesson was for you yeah I had you to teach it but that lesson was for you. And so I remember God first giving me the lesson about unforgiveness because I was harboring unforgiveness in my heart towards people that have done me wrong. I was harboring unforgiveness. And everywhere I went, the Holy Spirit really began to deal with me on harboring unforgiveness. And the Lord began to really tell me, you're going to have to forgive. You're going to have to release them. You're going to have to let them go. And it was even during the time where I was going back. It was like back to back. I was being hit back to back to back was hurt non-stop and then I was like God well how do I how do I let this go because it had got to a point that even in my physical body I began to feel the pain of it in my own physical body and then that's when the Lord was like you have to let it go you have to release it so we have to get to the point of letting go unforgiveness because it does put on it begins to um to affect your physical body not only your your mental um your mental state and your um, psychological state and your emotional state but it also begins to affect your physical state so again for unforgiveness harboring unforgiveness have consequences and we don't want those consequences to um to affect us in any kind of way and we want to begin to we want to be able to be healed we want to be able to be delivered we want to be able to walk in the call of God that God has ordained for our life we want to be able to walk in his purpose but we cannot do it if we're harboring unforgiveness harboring unforgiveness so we always have to we always have to be in a position to let it go and again it does not happen overnight let me say this it does not happen overnight. Many times, you know, we're forced into, um, you know, people, you know, begin to just preach hard at you. You have to forgive. You got to let it go today. You got to let it go. But it takes time, especially how deep, how deep the abuse or, or, or the suffering have been. It takes time. It takes time to, 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 um, to completely let it go over a course of time but I can say this and I can give you instructions in this particular area that if you go to God every single day I don't care even as bad as it may hurt it may hurt in every every time you may see that person or every time you know you may think about that person and 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 it may trigger something on the inside of you it may trigger a, a, a anger a bitterness on the inside of you but if you every single day if you release that person say god i forgive that person and call their name out say god i forgive amy you know call their name out and say god i forgive them i release them do it every single day until you get to the point that it no longer bothers you to see that person or hear that person's name or even think about that person, it will no longer bother you. It would no longer be in your subconscious. It no longer be in your subconscious. So every day, continue to release that individual. Continue to release those people. Begin to call a name out. Begin to say, God, I release so and so. You know, I, I begin, you know, just, just, just release it unto the Lord and let Him deal with those areas. And that way, you know, God can begin that healing process on the inside of us so that we can be able to uh, move on into a greater area of our healing and deliverance. So I'm going to read a couple of scriptures here talking about unforgive, talking about unforgiving and, and the consequences. Because we know the scripture says, it says, but if you do not forgive men of um, their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespass. So we have to forgive. If we want the Lord to, um, to forgive us of the things that we've done, 
you know, then we too have to, um, blessings, thank you for coming on. We too have to, um, have to forgive because we don't get, we don't always get it right. We don't get it right all the time. And sometimes, you know, un, I could say this unintentionally, not intentionally, <laughs> you know, some people do things intentionally, but you know, some of us, we do things, we may hurt someone unintentionally. You know, but the Holy Spirit on the inside of us will convict us and say, you know, hey, that wasn't right. You know, go back to that person and apologize. And so certain areas in our own life that we may sin, that we have, that we may sin in, then guess what? When we have forgiven other people of the wrongs that they have done to us, then we can be able to go to the Father and we can ask for forgiveness. So, so our Father, so He can forgive us of our trespass, of our wrongdoing. Okay, and then also the scripture says in um, Mark eleven twenty five. I'm trying to see eleven twenty five. I'm trying to see if this is the scripture that I want. Um, when you stand to pray, when you stand to pray, if you hold anything against another, forgive it, let it go, release it, so that your Father in heaven will forgive your trespass as well. So it go also it goes into your area of prayer. Um, for unforgiveness hinders your prayer life. And so, of course, in this hour, we definitely don't need our prayer life to be hindered. We need God to hear us. We need God to hear us when we pray, you know. And so we definitely, we don't need anything blocking our stream, our our, our prayer life in no kind of way. We want to keep our prayer life between the Father. We want to keep that open. We want to always keep our, our prayer line open unto the Father. We do not want that area to be closed. Amen. So that's another reason why we have to forgive. So these are some of the areas, the consequences of what happens when we do not forgive. And I'm going to go down a little bit further. Um, Let's see. Uh, forgiveness also takes away the power of the enemy from destroying us. Um, again, forgiveness takes away the power of the enemy from destroying us. So when, again, when we don't forgive, we give the enemy room. We, we give him place. And the scripture tells us to give no place to the devil. Ephesians 4, 27. So when we forgive, we shut the door. We shut the enemy out. We, 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 we don't allow the enemy to come in. You know, and, and we don't allow the enemy to come in to destroy us. Amen. Okay, so this is shutting the door from all that comes to contaminate our heart when suffering or have suffered any type of abuse. During and after the abuse, the victim undergoes betrayal, anger, anxiety, bitterness, resentment, hurt, disappointment, rejection, and abandonment. These are areas that the victim begins to undergo. They undergo betrayal because that's how they feel. They feel like, you know, I've, you know, I've been, I've been betrayed. I've been betrayed. I'm angry. I'm, I'm angry. Anxiety because I don't, I don't know if God is going to vindicate me in this situation. You know, when, when God, when are you going to come through? You seen what happened. You know what happened to me, God. When are you going to vindicate? When are you going to take care of the situation? You know, and I've been there. I've been there so many times. Oh God, when are you going to vindicate this? And just seem like it just seemed like it take forever for God to vindicate. But God is a vindicator. If we trust God, if we put our faith in him, we will know that God is a vindicator. And, and again, it does not happen overnight. So if you, again, if you've been abused on any type of level, you may not have been abused in your relationship or a marriage, but you have been abused on some level. You've been abused in a workplace, <laughs> you know, you've been abused in a workplace. You, you, you may not have been physically abused, but you've been verbally, you know, you've been verbally abused. You know, verbally abused. Someone may have attacked you with their words. They've torn you down with your words. That is verbal abuse. I told on that um maybe two weeks ago. That's verbal abuse. So it may not again, it may not be physical abuse. And because verbal abuse can be worse than physical abuse because there is an, even though there's no physical marks, and that's how a lot of people get away with um with abuse. With abusing people because they may not put their hands on you, but the words that they speak out of their mouth is enough to crush you, it, which is verbal abuse. Verbal abuse. Um, let's see. Um, 
And like I said, I don't want to get too much in some of this because I'm going to end up sharing this in another way at another time. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, these areas the, um, are door openers to all kinds of sicknesses, which will eventually end up destroying you and uh, destroying you completely, both spiritually and and physically, this is the whole plan of the devil. Betrayal is one um, is when one has been handed over to one's enemies. So this is when, let's say, for instance, you have told someone, you have told your abuser, um, particular er um, sensitive areas in your life. And again, I'm just going back into um, a um, person you may have been in a relationship with, you may have told an individual certain areas, certain uh, private areas in your life, certain areas of vulnerabilities in your life, and they go back and they tell people that don't have your best interests at heart, then that is an area of betrayal. Especially when they begin to use it against you, begin to target you in that particular area that, um, that they, they don't have your best and giving, giving over information that does not have your best interest at heart, making mockery of, of, um, of your weaknesses, of, um, those areas of vulnerability in your life. And so again, you know, you want to be careful and what you, you, um, you give over to people. Again, this is, this may not be, um, a person that you may have been in a relationship with, that you may not have been in a marriage covenant with, which is even worse because that person, um, that person is very close to you. That person that you, you really have trusted. You have put a lot of your trust in that person. And, and when they go back and when they betray you and when they take those areas of vulnerability and they give it over to, to people that do not have your best interest at heart, it is, it's very disheartening very um really painful and so um being able to trust areas of your heart in air in, in many areas you have to be able to trust begin to um trust god you know just trust god with these areas in your heart trust god with these areas in your heart too many times we put too much trust in a person we put too much trust in man and that's how a lot of times how we end up getting hurt because we put too much of our trust in people and we don't put our trust in God. And just going back to what I said earlier about those areas in our heart that we need to give over to the Lord, that people should not have access. That's the word I want to use access into these particular areas because they only belong to the father. They only belong to him. Only God can fix areas in our life that need to be fixed. They cannot be fixed by people. They cannot be fixed by a leader. You know, even in that area of giving too much room to uh, to those that's in leadership. You know, um, and then we we also end up suffering abuse from un from being um, under a particular leadership. A particular leadership. Um, so we want to begin to give those areas, begin to give these areas over to the Lord. Excuse me. Begin to trust God with these areas in our life, and that in that way we can keep these some of these doors that is open or have been open in our life. The the reason why they are open is because one again. We put too much trust in the arm of flesh, put too much trust in the arm of flesh. And this is where we all have missed it. We all have missed it where we have put too much trust in people that when they hurt us, you know, it's really, it, it's like we have a hard time bouncing back. We have a hard time gaining, gaining our trust again with people in general and not saying that we can't, that God is not going to allow us to trust people because yes, he will, he will give us people that we can trust and say, Hey, you can trust that individual. And the only reason why God can tell a person that you can trust that person because God first trusts that person. God first, he, he excuse me, he, he trusts that individual. Ask God, 
Ask God when people in your life, ask the Holy Spirit, ask God, ask him, God, can you trust them? Before you put trust in any person, even, you know, people that come into your life at the beginning, if you start in a, a, a relationship with someone, ask God, God, can you trust that person? If God can't trust that individual, then guess what? You should not be trusting that person either because evidently there is a character flaw somewhere. There is an area of in their, in their life of, of, um, that, that does not have integrity. You know, we have to have people around us to have, have integrity that's going to keep um, those areas that's in your life, those areas that you may share, those vulnerable areas, you have to have people in your life that have integrity. If they don't have any integrity or they don't have any character, you cannot tell them anything private about your life. Or if you do, they're going to share it. They're going to use it when you least expect. And a lot of times when that happens, especially when God is advancing you, when God is advancing you, you know, that's when people out of, uh, you know, people that you have communicated certain things, certain uh, vulnerable weaknesses, you share certain, those certain areas with them. So when you start advancing, they begin to bring that up so, so that they can slow you down so they can make you look bad before people. But, you know, when we begin to keep these areas in the place of prayer and before the Lord and with and with people that God can trust then we'll be able to be covered. God wants us to be covered. God wants us to be covered in every area of our life, not just in one area of our life, but God wants us to be covered. And a lot of times we open up the door to um to the enemy. We open up the door to the wrong people in our life instead of allowing the Holy Spirit to show us, God, is this, this is the individual that need to be in my life. If not, you have to close that door. You have to cut that cord until, or even if they do, or even if they if they never come to the place of being trustworthy you have to begin to keep that door closed allow that door to stay closed until um if god allows um that individual to come back in your life you have to keep that door shut like i said again we we get too much information we get too much information um so again the area of um of of, of harboring unforgiveness opens up the door to different types of sicknesses, different types of sicknesses. And sometimes, you know, when I hear, even when I hear people um, talk about um, the area of cancer, I'm going to use cancer as an example, because cancer is one of the areas that um, sometimes, you know, you have to go into asking God, is there any unforgiveness in my heart? Anytime there's a sickness that comes in your body, ask God, is there anything in my heart that have opened this door to sickness? You you can be eating well, you can be um you can be exercising, you can be doing all those things pertaining to your body, but you also have to take care of your heart. Being able to take care of your heart is very is very um important. Ask the Holy Spirit, is there anything in my heart that need to um that I need to renounce, that I need to um ask you to uproot out of my heart? You may be dealing with, with an area of bitterness. Dealing with an area of bitterness. You may be harboring unforgiveness in your heart somewhere. And 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 maybe you have totally forgot about the individual or the or the, the people that you have um unforgiveness against. You know, you just you, you moved on with your life. You know, you're progressing, but there's still an area of unforgiveness and bitterness in your in your heart. And so now I have opened up the door to sickness. So if there's any area in your life that that um that you may be dealing with any kind of sickness, ask the Holy Spirit, God, is there anything in my life, in my heart that is um that need to be dealt with so we can close this door to sickness? A lot of people die before they time they die before they time because they're harboring things in their heart and something a lot of times people don't want to let go they don't they don't want to uh forgive they'll hold on to that thing because they feel like you know um you know I, i'm angry i'm mad you know i don't want to let it go and they tell god i don't want i don't want to let it go what they did was wrong but it does not put the person more in bondage than it does for you 
So it puts you even in a greater bondage because you, you putting yourself in a place of, um, in a, in a prison. And it's also fear, fear of, uh, fear of, of, of God. You're not going to do what you said that you're going to do. So again, it's also forgiveness goes into God. I trust you to do your part in this situation. And a lot of times you may not even see, you may not even see what, how God has dealt with that individual. You may not even get to see it, but God could have dealt with that individual and God have may be using that person, maybe doing different things with that individual. And you still stuck. You still stuck in that place of I'm still holding on to unforgiveness for 10, 20 years. And you're sitting in the same place year after year because we refuse to forgive. Again, unforgiveness have consequences and we don't want to hold on to those consequences. Um, Let me see. So again, we may be like, well, God, you don't understand. <laughs> you know, I've had, I've had that, to, you know, um, I've heard people say that where, you know, God, do God even understand what I've gone through? Of course, God, God understands. And I read your scripture with that as well. Hebrews 4, 15, we have, for we have not a, a high priest, which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, with our infirmities but was in all points um, tempted like we are yet without sin. Yet without sin. So he know what we feel. We, he know the kind of abuse that we have suffered and is suffering. He is fully aware of it. He went to the cross. <laughs> you know, he went to the cross. He suffered, a, a, he suffered abuse. He suffered abuse. That was abuse. So he know, he know, he know, he know, he know what you are experiencing. He know. That's why I say again, it is important that we go to the father because he know. He know. He know. He know what it feels like. He know what it feels like to be abandoned. He know what it feels like to be rejected. He felt all of that on his way to the cross. He felt all, all of those areas. He felt the hurt. He felt the betrayal. He felt the disappointment. He felt it. Everything he felt. Everything that we go through. Everything we've gone through. And being, and, and being abused. He felt all of it. But yet he took it and he nailed it to the tree. He took it <laughs> and he was nailed to the tree. All the abuse that we've suffered, all the abuse that you have gone through, he already have gone through it. Psalms 24, uh, excuse me, Psalms 34, 18. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and he saves the crushed in spirit. Now, when you've gone through abuse, your heart is broken. Your heart have been broken. But he said he delivers the crushed in spirit. Those that have been wounded. He binds up the wounds. He heals us. He's near the broken hearted. So if your heart has been broken, he's able to bring your heart back to wholeness again. He able to bring your heart back to being delivered. He able to bring forth the, that deliverance in us. So that we can, so that we can move on. We have to give these areas to over to the Lord. We have to begin to really um, give these areas how to be healed, how to how to uh, be set free. And God will even there are times that God will even give you a safe environment. He'll begin to give you a safe environment around the right people. He will give you the right people in your life for a safe environment. People that's going to, people that's going to cry with you. People that's going to, um, be there for you. People that's going to, um, everything that you've gone through, they're going to be there with you through it. God would give you those people. And I call that, I call them a safe and that's your safe environment. Every environment is not safe. 
Every environment is not safe. And one thing about a safe environment is that there is no condemnation. No condemnation in that safe environment. Especially if they too have been in an area of abuse. They have dealt with some type of abuse. So again, that, that abuse, some of us have suffered physical abuse. Excuse me. Some of us have suffered um, mental abuse, psychological abuse. Some may have suffered um, sexual abuse. Um, and I understand that some of these things that um, I've talked about also, um, it brings in triggers. So I'm really careful um, in, in, in what I do um, say, because I do understand that certain areas, especially if you have, um, you've been healed from the area or you, or I would say not just healed, but sometimes because of the, the level of trauma, some people have blocked it out. They have blocked it out. And so um, God has to, in order for that person to be delivered, God has to go into where that person has suffered the trauma. And this is why, this is where you have arrested development, arrested development. It can be where that person may have been abused at the age of five or six, but that's where their, um, their development stopped in that area of that trauma. So what they have done, because now they are an adult, you know, they fully, they fully grown, you know, they, they, you know, but, um, in their development, their development, they're stuck in their development. And so God has to go in into their mental state. He has to go into their mental state and they need deliverance in their mind. They need deliverance. That, that, that those keys, those doors will be unlocked in order for that person to be totally delivered because now, you know, they, because they have suffered a traumatic experience, um, there are triggers. There are triggers. And it's another word that I want to use. I can't think of a word right now, but there are, um, there are triggers in that individual, um, that, um, there are triggers in that individual's mind, their thoughts, and anything that um, that appears or look like what they've been through, they have a tendency to shy away. You know, you won't know what's wrong with them. You'll be like, you know, what's wrong with you or whatever. Um, you have done nothing wrong to the person, but because of the the the, um, the trauma that they have experienced, they automatically, you know, push back. You know, so again, you know, these are areas that we have to uh, really pay attention to. That is not always you. There's not always you um, that is causing um, the pain, but it's, it may be something that um, you may say that you're not aware of. Um, it may how maybe how you may do something that may um, cause that that may reflect have that person to reflect back. Um, on that particular incident, on that trauma, on that abuse that they have suffered. Um, and again, that's why it's important that you understand where a person, where a person, um, is in their particular life in that moment. Even before, um, you engage into marriage, you have to find out where this person is in their life. Because if you do not know where the individual is in their life, you end up coming into a marriage covenant with that person. You will suffer tremendously. You'll suffer tremendously if you're not careful or in a relationship with that person. You will suffer because that person has not been delivered. And they're still, they're still on uh, traumatic. It's because I, I've been through it. I've experienced it myself where the individual was not delivered. So because of the trauma that they suffer, and this is especially when it comes to men, when it comes to men, because men have a tendency where they, 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 um, they internalize things. So they, they would, they're not going to talk it out. Men have, a, have really, uh, because of their pride, I will say, you know, it's hard for men to really come out and really talk about what they went through or the trauma that they have suffered, especially if it was a, a, if it was a sexual trauma when they was a, when they was a young child, when they was, uh, probably, um, 10 years old, nine years old or whatever. No, you know, and especially if the, if the sexual, if it was, um, a sexual abuse from a male. They don't want to talk about that. They don't want to talk about it. They were that they was molested. 
You know, because it because it, it brings forth shame. It causes them to, to look bad, you know, and it makes them feel bad. And so that's why a lot of men, what a lot of men um they 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 close that area out of their life. They don't want to talk about it. But as time go on, because they have not um received deliverance, they have not received healing, you know, and as time go on, they move it, they move it. They're, you know, they're in ministry. Some men is, you know, they own businesses, they have families, all of these things in their life. They and they and they look so wonderful. They you know they're so handsome and everything come but come to find out within they are broken, within they are crushed because they have never gone through the proper deliverance and the healing that God desired for them to go to go through and they live out their whole life with all of this in them and so as time goes on what ends up happening mm -hmm. is that you know what end up happening is that the abuse that they suffer from their childhood and whatever that 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 they that they go through after that if they go through relationship after relationship and their relationship was bad or um, or or um, every relationship they suffered some type of loss or whatever in that relationship then what they tend to do they have these the, what I, I used to term baggage they carry baggage from one relationship or from one marriage to the next so when they come into a marriage or a relationship with an individual and that individual could be a good person that they are coming into a relationship or a marriage with but because they have not been delivered again if they have not been this is not just with men but women too but if they have not been delivered then they will bring that in into that um into that relationship or in that marriage and that individual end up taking they end up taking the blows for every person that have um, abused them Every person that have abused them, they end up taking it and they don't deserve that. They feel like, I, what did I do? I didn't do anything to deserve that. But because of something that that person said or, or may have, um, brought about a reflection, um, for that individual, the individual goes on, on attack. And this is what happens a lot of times in abusive, uh, relationship and abusive marriages. Um, this is where we get a lot of domestic uh, abuse coming at because somebody um, did not receive the healing and the deliverance. Someone did not detect that that person may need deliverance or that person may need healing. And we begin to we begin to um, um, support them and elevate them in ministry. But no one can detect the level of abuse. And this is something that I really um, a lot of times I ask the Lord, excuse me, I ask the Lord about is that, um, I asked the Lord about, excuse me, is that, um, how is it that we can discern so much and so great on, um, on, 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 on someone operating in a level of, a, of, of an anointing or, or in a ministry, but we, but we don't discern the brokenness. That's what my God, we don't deserve the, we don't discern the brokenness that's within them. We don't, we don't see the brokenness that's within it. We don't see the little boy or the little girl that's crying out on the inside of them, but we can see everything else, but we don't see the, the part of them that's been hurt, the part of them that's been abused, the part of them that's been, um, that's been abandoned, the part of them that's been rejected, the part of them that's been left out, the part of them that, that that they have gone through. We don't see those areas, but we see everything else except for those areas. But we have to begin to ask God to bring us into those areas even more. And what it does, it takes, it takes a level of, of, of our intercession to be able to be able to see that deep. A lot of times our, our intercession is so, um, so shallow that we don't, we only see on the surface. We don't see in the depth of people's heart and really in the, in the depth of people's lives and our, in our integrity and our character does not, um, carry the weight to be able to see these areas because again, God is not going to open up your eyes to, into a life of an individual if you're going to, um, if you're going to use it. Um, you're going to use information to um, to mishandle or to hold something over people's head. God's not going to reveal it. So again, God really holds us accountable to the things that he revealed to us and he show us about the lives of people. He shows us about the lives, lives of people. So, um, so again, this goes into um, having a safe environment, um, coming into contact with, with trusted counselors, 
um, and trusted development teams. This is another, we have to begin to um, allow God to build. We need trusted deliverance teams in this hour. Trusted deliverance teams. There's too many deliverance teams that put too much on Front Street. That put too much on social media. There's, there's no way that we're supposed to have um, deliverance being shown publicly. They, these are private areas in people's lives that people are being set free and deliverance being delivered. Things are taking place. People are being delivered. But we have, but we're showing it on live stream. These private areas in people's lives. And these areas really need to be confidential. Need to be on a confidential level. I'm almost finished. Um, so we need we need people that are that are trustworthy. Trustworthy. You know. Ask, ask God, don't act, you know, a lot of times what we do, we ask people about people, but we need to learn how to ask God about people. Ask God about people. Are they trustworthy? Are they trustworthy? And one thing about when you're a victim of abuse, if a person is not, um, you know, it's already, the person is already in a vulnerable place after they've been abused. So when they come into contact after they've been abused around people that's not trustworthy, then it then it pulls them further away from receiving healing and deliverance. It pulls them further away um, of being able to trust individuals. So again, we want to be in a position where we are uh, where we are trustworthy. Uh, let's see. Bitterness is when we, I don't know if I read this. Bitterness is when we harbor unforgiveness, resentment, and hurt in our heart. Hurt must be uprooted out of the heart before it turns into bitterness. Excuse me. So it may start off as hurt. It may start off as hurt. But if we do not allow the Holy Spirit to go in and uproot those areas, we don't acknowledge these areas. Excuse me, as soon as you feel hurt, as soon as you feel that attack of hurt, the moment you feel it, ask the Lord to deal with the hurt. Renounce that area of hurt so it does not turn into bitterness. It's, it, hurt can easily turn into the area of bitterness, especially this is in another area. I want to say this too, especially as being an intercessor. The enemy love to target intercessors, true intercessors. Because if the enemy can put unforgiveness and bitterness in your heart as an intercessor, then you're not going to, you're not going to be in right position to be able to, pr to pray for people, like especially, <laughs> you know, for those that have hurt us, especially for those that have hurt us. We're not going to pray for them because we carry in the area of bitterness. And bitterness corrupts the soul and lead us to flow from an impure stream. When this happens, our perception um, towards others become distorted. And we no longer see people. We will no longer see people, especially those that have hurt us through the, um, through the eyes of Jesus Christ or through the cross, through the power of the cross of Jesus Christ. So again, we want to make sure that we receive those the heal those areas of healing, um, those areas of resentment, those areas of hurt that we have suffered, in order for us to be able to move on. Those areas of disappointments, uh, rejections, um, and also again going back and just forgiving ourselves. We have to forgive ourselves. How how did this happen? And we, we have a tendency to condemn ourselves and say, you know, this one, this would not have happened. And this is a, this is the trick of the enemy because the enemy would put in your mind, you'll be sitting, you'll be thinking, you know, especially, especially if you are, you know, if you're, um, if you are usually, it's easy for you to discern things quickly. Um, or if you've been in, let's say, I would say been in ministry for years or been walking with the Lord for years, I would say that. And the enemy will bring in your mind, you know, well, you know, if you, if, if you were so discerning, you would have caught that. Or if you were so, if you was, you know, so much in who you say you are, 
then you would have seen that. You would have already seen that in the spirit. But that's not always the case. You know, and so the enemy want to bring condemnation. He want to, he want to condemn you for why, why didn't you see it? So it's, it's like there's a blame shifting, you know, in the spirit, you know, that comes, that, that attacks you, that comes to your mind. And to take your focus off of what the, what the abuser have done, you know, and um, and again, you know, and and to to really say that it wasn't that you know it wasn't the abuser fault, it was your fault. If you would have seen it, then you would have never um, you would never been in that situation. And so um, again, and, and especially if individuals say, and I, I tell people a lot of times that this is a trigger, is that when you tell people. Where if you wouldn't have been with that person, that wouldn't have never happened. That's a trigger. No one deserves to be abused on no level. I don't care if it's um if it's abuse from from uh, from a leader, a, a ministry leader. Um, and, and again, talking about those areas of abuse, with which whether it was um psychological abuse, mental abuse, um, especially sexual abuse, because again, that is an area. Where many that have been sexually abused, whether they was raped, molested, the first thing that is told to them or to come to their mind, they automatically feel shame and they automatically say it was my fault. But again, no one deserves to be abused and, or, or um, financial abuse. Um, there are people that have been abused financially, um, emotionally abused, um, so it's, it can be um, different areas. I wrote it down somewhere. Again, there's, there's seven different areas of abuse. Physical abuse. Um, um, so you may not been abused in all areas. But I guarantee you, when we go over the areas of abuse, I'm going to go come back and talk about the seven areas of abuse. In some, in some way, shape, or form, you've even been, been abused or and you did not realize or recognize you was abused or you were the abuser. So there's there's no other way in looking at um the situation but even in all of that we still have to forgive those that have abused us, that have um, that have abandoned us, that have rejected us. We have to begin to let go of those areas and allow God to heal us, if we're going to move on and be able to advance in the kingdom of God, be able to advance in the things of God, in our purpose, and what God has called us to do to advance in life in general, we have to allow God to deal with these areas in our heart of unforgiveness. Amen and amen. Again, I believe that's all I'm going to share on tonight about forgiving. Um, our abuser. And again, there's some areas that I did not um, really expound on um, as of yet, because again, some of this, some of these um, things that I have in my notes, I'm going to use it for another date. So I'm not going to uh, put it out there um, in the public as of right now until time, but um, just really wanting to come on and really, um, um, really let you know that we have to forgive those that have abused us and not saying that you have to you have to go back to your abuser. You you don't have to go back. Sometimes people tell you that after you have forgiven, you have to go back. No, you don't have to go back to a person that have abused you. That have you know, you go back to come on, we go you go back into a situation and that person have physically abused you or they have raped you. Come on. And, and we, we go back to no, God never. No, it's not for you to go back into those situations of abuse. Never to go back into those situations. Yes, we are to forgive. And, and when it comes to forgiving an individual, we have to, we have to see those areas of change. Have that person changed. And it does not mean that you have to stay there in that situation to see if that person changed or to wait for that person to change because that person may not ever change. Or if that person do change, it may not, you may have to go through hell for the next 5, 10, 25 years, you know, 
before you actually see the result of that individual changing. So you don't have to stay there and tolerate the abuse. You don't have to stay there and tolerate the abuse. And that's not wise counsel. That's not wisdom. Because so many people have gone back to their abuser and because they have gone back, they are now dead. Because why? Because they listen to false counsel about going back to your abuser. No, forgive the person. And if, and if that person desire to change, they will change. God, if they give their total heart to the Lord, if they ask God to forgive them, if, if they, they, you know, if they, um, if they, they, you know, they uh, remorseful about what they've done. They have repented. God have have um, have forgiven them. They have received uh, transformation, and God had totally did a work in them. Then that's a different story. I understand it. I've heard testimonies about that. However, if the person have not changed, I do not recommend you to reconcile back with that person until that person have changed. Have changed. And this is from experience. This is not something that I've heard somebody else talk. No, we have to begin to talk about these particular areas. Why? Because there's so many people going back to their abusers and the, and the abuser have not changed. Forgive them. Let them go. Release them over to the Lord. Allow God to deal with them. But you don't have to stay there and keep going back to the abuse. God does not want us to continue to be abused. He does not. That's not his plan for any of us to be abused. It's not his plan. It's not his plan. Okay, so the seven the seven areas of, of, of abuse, emotional abuse, mental abuse, psycho, psychological abuse, physical abuse, spiritual abuse, um, financial abuse and um, sexual abuse. So again, I'm going to eventually, I'm going to come back and talk about those seven areas of abuse. Um, so, um, so we have to, again, we have to forgive those that abuse us in order to move on, renounce those areas, renounce those areas of hurt, of resentment, of bitterness, um, every area that the Holy Spirit began to bring to mind. That's why it's important that we have our relationship with the Lord so that we can ask him. Reveal, God, reveal areas in my heart that um that need to be um that I need to be set free in, that I need to be delivered in, so that um so the Lord can bring forth those areas of, of true healing, true deliverance, and we can walk in the totality of what God has called us to walk in. Amen. Amen. So blessings and favor as always say, um, thank you all for chiming in on tonight. Thank you all for that's going to watch after the replay. Um, if you want to contact me, you can always inbox me. Amen. And, um, um, if there's anything that you, um, want, um, desire to have prayer about, then reach out to me. You can reach out to me in my inbox and I will, um, get back with you. Amen. So again, let's forgive our abuser. You cannot do it on your own. It takes the Holy Spirit to help us to forgive. It is, it is his forgiveness on the inside of us that allow us to forgive those that have mistreated us. Because we know that when Jesus was on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And so Jesus, you know, the power of forgiveness is very important. The power of forgiveness is what calls us to come out of those, out of the place of prison, out of the place that we have been stuck for years. Because that's what the enemy wants us to do. He wants us to stay in a place that we're stuck and that we never move on. We never progress into the blessings, into the favor, into even um, right relationships, even into our marriage covenant for some of some that's not married. God wants us to be healed, want us to be whole so that we can be able to move in into the blessings and the favor and, and the level of ministry that God wants us to move into the advancement of ministry because we cannot advance the kingdom of God holding on to unforgiveness, hold on to bitterness, hold it on to, to resentment, to hurt because eventually those areas is going to spew over to others and we don't want those areas to, to, um, to, um, to spew over to others and cause others to be defiled because that's what usually happens 
is that when, when we ourselves is carrying bitterness, and bitterness have a tendency to spread, it has a tendency to spread. So we don't want it to spread. You know, we don't want to continue to bleed out, but we want God to bring forth total restoration in our lives in this hour so that we can be all that he has called us to be. We don't want to leave this earth without fulfilling the purpose of God for our life. We came in the earth with a purpose. Therefore, we should leave this earth with our part with the purpose that God has given us fulfilled. And that's the whole key to this whole thing about um about forgiving those that have hurt us is that God, I want to walk in the totality of the purpose in which you have called me to walk in before the foundation of the world. And so God will begin to take us through those healing process. He wants to walk us through those areas of healing. I've been through it myself. So again, I talk about my areas, uh, my own, uh, my own area of experience. Um, those that I've come into contact with that have, uh, that has also suffered a level of abuse. Um, and I talk about these areas because people need to know how to walk through these areas instead of just talking about abuse, instead of just targeting on, on this is what the abuse have done. This is what it looks like. And, and never talking about how to be healed, how to never, how to overcome this particular area, because many again are stuck in this area and they need to be set free and they need to be delivered. And this is the hour for deliver. This is the, this is the great time that God really wants to bring restoration to all of our lives. Amen. So have a wonderful night and I will be back on again at another later date and I will um, share that on my page as well. So as you continue to um, to watch my page, I will be sharing more about dealing with this area of abuse. And of course, this is not something that um, that that is that is that's a one time for me. This is actually the ministry that God has given me is dealing in the area of abuse. I deal in lots of areas of, of abuse that God have allowed me to uh, be able to minister in for over um, for for years now. And so again. Um, um, this is not something that I just, you know, just started to talk about now. I've been talking about it. Um, did I just bring in a, a more greater awareness in this particular area, especially when we talk about um, narcissism in the body of Christ, in the church. So it needs to be dealt with. So we're dealing with the elephant in the in the room and we're no longer sweeping things under the carpet so we bringing things god the holy spirit is bringing things to light because he wants to deal with this area of abuse that's been um that's really been in the body of christ for a long time and a lot of leaders are mistreating the sheep and so god wants to deal with that in this hour that no longer will the sheep be um mistreated no longer will the sheep be mishandled you know, and so um, God is really um, dealing with um, leaders in this hour about how we're handling the sheep, you know. So God wants to um, God wants to shine light in this particular area. Have a wonderful night. And again, I will be seeing you soon. Thank you for chiming in and have a wonderful night. Amen. God bless.